In the 80s and 90s, uh, I worked with acoustic levitation uh, for a company that built space flight hardware for NASA. And uh, we ended up flying two flights on uh, the space shuttle, uh, STS-7 and 51A. While I was at that company, uh, my boss let me start uh, a small speaker division uh, building a motor-driven uh, subwoofer at the time, uh, servo drives. And uh, that was a, an excellent place uh, to work because uh, there were a lot of technical problems to solve and uh, it's, it was all stuff that was it's not like it was fun, but it was as close to fun being work as you could get, I think. Um, anyway, and dealing with the levitation sources, uh, that's where that's where the light came on as far as how does sound actually behave. It's uh, sound is kind of confusing. It'd be a lot easier if you could see it, um, but it can radiate like a a, a wave. Uh, and reflect off things like light does, uh, and and uh, but it can also behave like a liquid, a fluid. Um, the light for that went on when I had to make a microphone that would go inside of a furnace that was at 1600 degrees centigrade, and there was no easy way to do that. The microphone wouldn't survive, but uh, you could pass the sound through a thin tube, and it it traveled down that tube perfectly well and uh, at, at the time I had a three foot long piece of this uh, what they called capillary tube and I wound it around my coffee cup and it had no effect on the sound so anyway it's that was sort of a huh uh, moment um, so that's uh, I guess you'd say that working with the levitation at, at high frequencies that was that was a very informative uh, as far as how sound actually works. And so later, uh, after the shuttle disaster, I was sort of faced with starting over in life, and uh, was thinking about a, a full range loudspeaker. And I remembered something that a, a Don Davis at SonodCon had said once, talking about the straight-sided horns having um, better directivity, uh, which was good for an audience. You don't want the highest focus down to the center. You want everything all all the way. And uh, it it dawned on me then why that was why they had. Uh, less low frequency loading uh, and that's because of the rate of expansion. So when you look at a horn, the, the part of the horn that gives you the increase in efficiency, um, they, they call it like a transformation or a transformer effect, which is close enough. So if you look at that, there's a, a high pass uh, corner to the frequency response of that and that's that's related to how fast the the horn expands if you wanted to make a 30 hertz uh, bass horn what you find is the area can't expand any faster than doubling about every two feet if you wanted a 60 hertz horn it's one foot in other words it's proportional to the wavelength so if you looked at a conical horn um, like Don Davis talked about, with the better directivity but poor low frequency loading, uh, it dawned on me the reason for that was the rate of expansion at the apex was very rapid and would not couple mid range frequencies, uh, let alone bass. And so it was sort of like, hmm. And uh, so I went out in the workshop and put together a conical horn and mounted some mid-range drivers on the side where I thought the rate of expansion would be appropriate for mid-range. And that, it appeared to work. I mean, there were other complications involved, um, but that part of it uh, worked. So the thought was, all right, if you had this conical horn, 
what if I put drivers along the sides where the expansion rate was appropriate for that frequency range and use drivers that were appropriate for driving a horn in that frequency range. So that's that's actually how it began was uh, that first first experiment in the garage um, and it's taken uh, well that's almost 20 years ago now um, and I'd say, I'd say there's still we still figure things out new things out occasionally and um, one of the one of the big uh, changes I guess you'd say was to say all right well how do you do this with more than one HF driver and um, the drivers themselves are so large that uh, at high frequencies there's, you can't get them close enough together to combine so you have to do some other stuff to uh, to create segments of a wave front and things like that so that's uh, like the paraline is one way to do that um, and there are several different kinds of layered combiners uh, do that too but the, the whole idea is to produce a single radiation from multiple drivers. <laughs>